Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's me coming back at you again with another vid. Now, the WBC has finally, finally issued a ruling on the testing fiasco in situation with Alexander Vivekin and the Deontay Wilder mess. Okay, uh, they released a nine-titled uh, article or statement, and it was captured by Boxing Scene. Shout out to them, by the way. Uh, I'm not going to go through the uh, first eight um, titles of the article. I'm just going to and skip to the um, the last title, which is Title Nine, which is the actual ruling on on the Pivek situation. It says here, "quote The WBC's board of ruling on um, board of governors ruling is based on the facts as known to the WBC at the time of the ruling. The WBC is not biased, <laughs> which I find cool to believe, nor does it take into account prejudicial." Uh, perception about the use of banned substance in a particular region of the world of live boxers or any particular nationality. The, the, uh, the WBC does not issue rulings based on, on gener um, generalities of prejudice and absolutely opposes any form of discrimination. Now, based on the adverse findings of Mr. Vivekin's A and B uh, April 27th samples, and take into consideration to detect the levels of Mondonia in those samples, the impossibility of scientifically proving that Mr. Pavekin ingested Mondonia after January 1st of this year and what is noticed concerning Mondonia, the WBC has ruled as follows. A. In order to protect the welfare and the health of the participants, the WBC has called off the bout and reserved any further ruling until the ongoing investigation, inquiry, and evaluation process is concluded. B, the WBC granted on champion Deontay Wilder the right to make a voluntary defense of his title, which he which took place on July 16th of this year. C, Vada, persuade to the WBC's clean boxing program, will design a Pacific testing protocol for Mr. Pavekin at Mr. Pavekin's own cost and expense. The VADA design protocol will commence as soon as feasible and the ruling will continue for one year thereafter. And D, in the event there is any adverse finding concerning any of Mr. Pavekin's uh, samples during the time prescribed above, the WBC shall immediately, number one, Suspend Mr. Pavekin for participation in, in any WBC sanctioned events indefinitely. Two, divert, divest Mr. Pavekin from any WBC title or any other rights he might be have at the time. And three, impose any and all available penalties under the clean boxing program without any further inquiry. E. If during the course of pending litigation between Mr. Pavekin and, and champion Deontay Wilder, the court makes a final ruling in in that defers from the findings set forth herein. The WBC shall have the right to review this ruling and take any course of action it may deem appropriate. And lastly, F, if the, if WADA issues a notice, his policy on the Meldonia in a manner would necessarily in a different ruling in this case, the WBC reserves the right to review ruling and take any course of action it may deem appropriate. Hmm. Wow. Okay. I'll leave it at there. So apparently, Bevekin has been exonerated from the WBC, which was uh, pretty much expected after the Waters um, latest statement, where they've changed the um, they changed their ruling and extension on the um, consumption of meldonium below the limit, um, which was initially stated. Uh, what was the date? Was it uh, March thirty first of this year? Yeah, it was March thirty first of this year. And then they've extended it between January first to October thirtieth um, of this year. So. Yeah, uh, they <laughs> completely changed the ruling, but it is what it is. Um, so, but what's interesting enough about this uh, article and this um, this finding here is that now that Pavekin has now been subjected to the clean boxing program. Now, from my understanding, the clean boxing program is not at the fighter's expense. But in this case, given that Pavekin had failed that drug test and the WBC is granting him um, the right to go ahead and fight and clear him in a provisional way. They're going to say, okay, look, we're going to clear you, but however, you must participate in a clean boxing program and it must be out of your expense, which he has, seems like has agreed to. So, yeah, so this is the reason why I think this is a provisional um, lift uh, or provisional uh, a way of clearing him. So he's will be, so in other words, I'm, let me go ahead and reword that. In other words, he's being closely monitored. So... Yeah, just like pretty much every other fighter in the clean boxing program. But in this case, yeah, he's being closely monitored now. 
given the fact that this is, you know, those three tests is still highly suspicious that he, how he passed those three tests and fell the fourth one in the B sample on it. So that's, that's very odd. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it's interesting to note the WBC has even stated if WADA does change his policy on Maldonia in a matter with it, that would necessarily change the result of a different ruling in this case, the WBC will reserve its right to review that ruling and take any other action as deemed appropriate. So, <laughs> man, this is very, very dodgy. So if they do change the ruling and find Povekin at fault, then, yeah, they can they can they can reserve the right to suspend him if they want to. But, you know, that's what they're saying. But, you know, obviously, I don't see that happening. Um, yeah, he's cleared. Now we can finally move on from this fiasco. And uh, let's see. Um, let's see how he uh, performs without the million drug to his advantage. Let's see, because now now um, the WBC has immediately ordered uh, to fight Bermain Stavern, which actually I'm looking forward to that fight. This will be a very, very good fight. And stylistically, Pavekin is a comfort pressure fighter. You know, he's very devastating in the inside. So, you know, you can't give him a chance to throw those inside shots. As far as Stavern is concerned, Stavern is very, very lethal when it comes to the counter punching. He does uh, have power behind those counter punches, especially with the left hook. So Pavekin, for him to win this fight, he's going to have to try to find a way to use some type of reach. Um, I don't, you know, he doesn't really have a reach advantage over uh, Stavern, but he's going to have to find a way to um, to fight Stavern from a distance. Because if he fights the Stavern in the inside, he's giving him a, a chance to throw those counter hooks in the inside. And um, Stavern, on the other hand, he's going to have to find a way to smother Pavekin and, and not give him a chance to... Uh, throw his um, powerful hooks in the inside and his power body um, body shot. So um, if I had to pick a winner, I would give, I would, um, I would have to go with uh, Pavekin slightly though, but the WBC has ordered this fight to be the winner of this fight becomes a mandatory challenger to Deontay Wilder's title. So, <laughs> wow. So technically, Pavekin is no longer the mandatory challenger. He's ranked number one, but he's not the mandatory challenger. Um, Bermain Stavert, well, no, not Bermain Stavert. So the winner of this fight becomes the mandatory challenger to be on Deontay Wilder's title. So yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Care to comment? I'll post a link to the article so you guys can take a look at the WBC statement. You can come to your own conclusions and come to your own um, thoughts. Let me know what you think. Care to comment, share, subscribe, signing off. Peace.